Hello everybody, it's Mike here at Game for Scratch. Welcome back to our ongoing Armory 3D Game Engine tutorial series. Today we're going to look at creating custom nodes. Now you may have noticed over time that a lot of the functionality in hacks isn't necessarily replicatable using the logic node system. What we're going to show today is how to expose hacks to create a custom node so you can make up for these things that are missing. Specifically, one of the functions that's missing is a very simple thing to do is switch active cameras and there is no active node for doing that. So that's exactly what we're going to create today. So we're going to show you how easy it is is to extend Armory so you have your own nodes within Armory. Now we're following along to the text-based tutorial. Once again, it's this series here on Dev Game. I will link this down below. And specifically what we are doing today is this tutorial right here. Now we're actually gonna be following along with it pretty closely because I'm actually gonna be doing cut and paste coding in this um, actual tutorial because every time you get something wrong, you have to reload Blender, which makes it kind of a pain in the butt. Now you guys have probably watched me fat finger code enough that you probably don't wanna see me restart Blender 15, 16 times while I fix syntax errors. So I'm going to straight out cut and paste the code from dev game. And I suggest you do the same, at least to start. Now you're going to find a lot of the code we're working with is straight out templated code, nothing really special to it. So it is perfect kind of code for cutting and pasting. And I will explain exactly what the code does when we get to it. So in order to create your own um, node, you have to basically create some extensions to your project. Go ahead in uh, Armory 3D, load it up, create a project somewhere and save it like so, do an initial build, like so. And then once that is done, basically come on down here to Armory Project and click Project Folder. This will open up uh, either Explorer or Finder in the uh, appropriate directory for you. And then close down Blender because every time you create a new node, the extension needs to basically be loaded when Blender first loads. So now that we've done that, we need to create an exact series of directories. First off, in the directory that your project is going to go into. So in this top level folder where your .blend file is, you want to go ahead and create a new folder and call it libraries. Case matters, name matters. So make sure it's libraries like that and create it. And then inside of that, we're going to have to create a couple more files and directories. So open up that directory and create a new top level directory for the name of your node. So I'll just go ahead and use my initials. So MJF node. So you call that whatever you want. Whatever your node actually did is probably an appropriate name for it. And then in this folder, we need to create a Python file. So just go ahead to new uh, text document, and I'm going to call it uh, blender.py. Uh, you have no choice. This is what you have to call it. So blender.py, like so. Allow it to rename, and then open that up in your text editor of choice. Uh, open with, and then where are you, Visual Studio Code? All right, here we go. So this is the code we're going to be editing. And once again, in this particular case, I'm going to do straight out cut and paste code so we don't make errors. Uh, the code is available on uh, Dev Game. Just basically copy and paste it in. This is the code you want to go with. One of these icons actually will copy it. I think. Oh, I guess not. All right. So let's just highlight our code like so and paste that into the editor. And again, this is kind of the bootstrap that is going to be loaded by Blender. And all this really is doing is basically, there's a bunch of imports so you have the stuff you need. And then what you're doing here is basically you're declaring a class and we're creating a new node called Switch Camera. So this is the class definition, uh, a couple of IDs that uh, Armory needs internally to identify this thing. So basically give it a unique name. The naming convention is LN and then what you want to call it. So I just went with LN node name, so LN Switch Camera. A label and an icon, so this is how it's actually going to show up. Um, and then and finally, there's the, uh, the to find the initialization code. Basically, this is your constructor. And what you're doing here is telling uh, Blender how to draw this node. So remember in the nodes, you had your left hand side and your right hand side. Your left hand side were your inputs, your right, your out, your Sorry, left-hand side was your inputs, your right-hand side was your outputs. Well, that's basically what you're defining here. First off, you're saying a new output, and this is a socket action. Remember, those are the ones that basically the red lines that you can connect things to make them actually work. Uh, so we have that one as an out and a socket action as an in. And then finally, we have an object type. And we're going to call it camera. So those are your, those are the parameter names. Those are what they take. So we have an an out socket, an in socket, and we take a camera object parameter, which is of type socket object. This is the one that allows you to select things in the scene. Um, it's pretty commonly used. Now, if you're curious, the actual choices here are also defined on uh, dev game. So these are the different parameters you can use. So you could have socket shader, int, float, string, bool, vector, color, object, and actions. And then categories include these. We'll get back to categories in a second. 
Um, so over here, you'll see then we finally register it. Basically, this is what's going to hook up your custom node into the Blender side of things. And we're doing um, add node, our node name, and then the category to add it under. This is where the menu that's going to show up when you say add a new node under the logic editor. This is going to determine what category it can be in. And once again, if you come back here, you will see the various different categories that are possible right now. All right. So that is that. And then finally, we just call to register our nodes in with ARM. So the Armory code now knows that there's this additional uh, node type available. And that's really it for this guy. So we close that guy down. And now we head on back here and we need to create a couple of more folders specifically. And again, this is important to match up. And if you if your node doesn't load and you're copying and pasting like I am, it just means that you've created an improper function. So the, um, the Python, the blender.py file goes into the directory you made under the directory name libraries and then within that we create a folder called sources and inside of sources we create armory and then inside of armory we create logic node like so and then inside of that we go ahead and create our hacks file so we're gonna go ahead new um, text document and we'll call this guy switch camera dot hacks like that and we'll go ahead and do come on why is open with not working one second okay so where did that go? Right click, open with Visual Studio Code. Okay, so here we are. This is where we are going to create the hacks code that is actually the logic of our node. So this is where you would interface your hacks logic over to what you're actually gonna implement as a node. And once again, we're going to be doing this one via copy and paste. Like you said, this guy is a pretty straightforward script. So we'll just paste that guy in there and I'll explain it in a second. Let me just get some indentation going back because this can be a little confusing to see. So we'll tab that guy in, tab that guy in. All right, there we go. So here you can see our actual logic and there's not a whole lot to it. But first off, I want to explain exactly why we created that directory that we did. So you see here we've got sources and then underneath we've got armory logic node. Well, that is because this is how our package is defined and you're going to want to match the other, all of the logic nodes have this package armory.logic node uh, defined above them. So you're going to want to match that. that. So that's why their directory structure exists as it was. And then ultimately our class name is switch camera. This needs to match up with your pi function. Uh, over here uh, and then otherwise not a whole lot going on here. You're basically you're in your constructor or you're new. You basically just call super to the tree so that uh, the built-in normal logic node constructor functions operate. And then you've got a function called run. And basically when the node needs to execute, this code runs. And then you see here, first thing we're doing is we're creating a new camera and passing it to the input of one. Now those inputs are defined once again when we did over here the two inputs are defined. So this is why we want input one, like so. So this basically gets a reference to our object and we'll go back on over. So once we have a reference to that object, uh, basically we just say, so that's actually going to be uh, the object name. Um, so now we, no, no, sorry, that's a reference to the object. And then what we do is basically call iron.scene.activeGetCamera by name. So we pass in the objects.name. So this will say, you know, camera one or camera two, or whatever the value is on the other end. And simply we're making it the active camera by calling iron.scene.activeCamera and passing in the camera value that this returns. And then finally, we're calling back to our um, parent class to run and continue whatever logic node functions that we're inheriting from it. So like I said, it's an extremely straightforward and easy to use node. Uh, but that is kind of the extent of it. Now, what I would recommend doing when you're trying to work out this code, start off as a trait, you know, work your code, make sure that it works, and then port the logic over as best you can. Because uh, the testing process is a bit of a pain in the butt for your own custom logic. As you have to load your project into Blender each time to get it to register to make sure that your updates took. So if you create a syntax error or something, you have to restart Blender every single time. A bit of a pain, but, uh, you know, 
let's go on. Uh, so now speaking of reloading Blunder, let's do exactly that. Fire up your trusty copy of Armory and run. And there you see, load our project like so. And what you're going to want to do is check with the system console, make sure that no errors occurred. If there's a problem, it will most likely show up there already. Uh, it looks like we're fine at this point. So now what I'm going to do is come on down here, switch over to, well, I'm already there, but go to our node editor, our script, create a node tree for it. And you'll see if I come here to add, it was under, remember when I did this, we registered this under the value category. So we switch on over here. We will see add value. And there is our new node like that. So you can see we have an in, we have an out, and we have an object that we can pass to it. So if we want to, uh, we can just go ahead and say add um, input on keyboard. And let's say if you hit the one key, we will set it to this camera. Otherwise, on the two key, we will set it to, well, that doesn't make a lot of sense. So let's go ahead and create a second camera here. All right, so right about there, add camera, like so, rotate Y. Yoink, and just bring this guy back. Let's switch to camera view. All right, and then one last thing to show you, I'll actually show you this later. Actually, never mind. that comes up in the next tutorial. So we've got our two different cameras. They both should look. Uh, we see here we've got, when we hit the one key, we'll show the one camera. We hit the other key, we'll set it to the second camera. And now let's go ahead and attach our, attach our guy up to something. We'll, we'll attach it to the cube. So a new trait of type node and wire up our node tree. Let's save up in case we haven't and do a build. Mm -mm -mm. And then our custom node in action. Any minute now. Not sure what's taking so long. I did just update to Windows 10 most recent service pack, so that might be part of it. Uh, one second. Quick restart, just in case. Here we go, there's our example. Press the two key, one key, two key, one key, two key. So there you see, we've created our own custom node that allows us to now switch cameras, and it's a pretty straightforward process. Again, the thing that you are going to fight with by far and away the most often is syntax errors. So basically, you're gonna write your code here, you're gonna um, run it in Blender, and then you're gonna get an error message. So let's say, for example, I screwed this up. So we called this guy River Register instead. I'll shut this guy down, and then we're gonna fire up our, our armory, like so. And now you're going to see when we load this guy, it didn't quite work so well. So see how we've got these undefined? It's because that custom node no longer exists. So this is where your trusty debugger is going to come in. And you're going to see that it had an error calling for the has no attribute register. So basically it tried to call for a function that wasn't defined because we just turned it into register. Um, so basically that is how you're going to be doing your debugging. It's not a great process, but... Um, yeah, I guess, I guess it's just not a great process. That's all I can really leave it at. But the whole process overall isn't really that hard. Creating your own custom nodes, it's quite straightforward. As you saw from the actual hacks code we worked with, um, very, very simple. And this guy, for the most part, you're just going to basically cut and paste this and then switch it out based off of the inputs you want to use. So creating custom nodes in Armory isn't really hard at all. Debugging it, is. So that's kind of where you're going to probably have the most pain dealing with this process. Anyways, I hope you found that useful. Uh, again, there is the text-based series that we are going through. Um, next up, you can guess what we're going to do. And that is going to be a tutorial on cameras and camera con and character controllers. Hopefully you're finding the series useful so far. And I will talk to you all soon. Okay, goodbye.